In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate diluted earnings per share by using the if converted method. So let's say that you have a bond, and so this bond can be converted uh, from maybe a thousand dollar bond could be converted into 15 shares of common equity, right? So you could get 15 shares of common stock, and that's at the bondholder's discretion. They decide at any time if they hold a one thousand dollar bond, they say, I instead want 15 shares of common stock they can convert their debt into equity. So when you have this conversion, it can potentially dilute or decrease and lower earnings per share. So when we think about basic earnings per share, let's say that earnings per share was $2.30. If you have a bunch of these bonds that could potentially be converted to equity, that could potentially reduce this earnings per share. Maybe it's lower, maybe it's $2.02 .02 a share. And so this needs to be disclosed on the financial statements, and we're just gonna do a little quick walkthrough and show you how you do that. So there's gonna be two effects when you had a bond conversion. Number one is you're going to have the numerator increase. And when I say the numerator, I'm talking about our basic EPS equation right here. So we've got, this is our, how we calculate basic earnings per share. So the numerator, this top part of the fraction, that's going to increase when we do this if converted method. Because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume that the bonds were converted to equity, and then we're gonna say what would the earnings per share be? What's the diluted earnings per share? And so when I say the numerator increases, what's happening is this number is going to be higher because we're gonna add back the interest expense that we would now be saving because the debt holder has converted to equity. Right, so normally you have a bondholder, you have to pay them interest, right? But they've converted equity, or at least we're assuming that they have. And so we need to add back the interest expense. And the interest expense was taken out of net income when we calculated net income. So now we need to add it back to the numerator. Okay, so we're gonna add back the interest expense so that the numerator is gonna go up, but the denominator, the den denominator is also gonna go up. And why? Because we're talking about the denominator is just the number of uh, common shares outstanding and that's obviously going to increase if a bunch of debt holders all of a sudden say hey we don't want debt we want common shares outstanding so then the common shares outstanding is also going to increase okay so those are the two effects that we have when we use the if converted method so let's walk through an example and, and kind of see how this would all play out so let's say in our example that we have net income let's say that it's hundred and twenty thousand dollars for our firm and in our firm, let's say that we're really good at base jumping. We, we jump off cliffs for a living. We're really good at doing that. And we train other people to base jump. So that's what we do. And hey, it's a, it's a profitable business to be in. We made $120,000 in net income. We do not have any preferred dividends. So preferred dividends is zero. So when we calculate that numerator, we will not have anything for preferred dividends. And then the shares outstanding to make this easy, let's say that there are 30,000 shares outstanding and that there are no changes to shares outstanding during the year, right? Aside from, let's hold, obviously we're gonna assume that we're gonna convert uh, these, these bonds to equity, but aside from that, let's just say that uh, there's no changes, right? It's just the number of shares outstanding was 30,000 uh, uh, throughout the year. Now we need to know some things about the convertible debt. So let's say that there's $100,000 in convertible debt and that that $100,000 pays 6% interest rate. And let's just assume that these bonds were, were issued at par. And the reason is I wanna make it easy to calculate the interest expense just so, so it, it's just easy, it's just straight for an entire year, it'd be $6,000 of interest expense. So we'll just make that really simple, right? It's just the bonds were issued at par. And then this debt, these bonds are convertible into 10,000 shares of equity, right? So if the entire lot of debt. If everybody who held the debt, that 100 grand, just said, you know what, we want to convert, they would get 10,000 shares of equity. Okay, so that's going to be the effect on our denominator. So now we can go ahead and also I, I should say we need to know the tax rate because and this is very important. So when we think about that effective interest, right, so we're paying 6% interest or $6,000 a year in interest, but remember we're getting a tax shield, right? We're getting interest expense gives us a tax shield, right? So we're actually going to adjust for that when we do this, this if converted method. So let's go back. And if we remember now, it's not that much different from our basic method, right? We're going to have net income minus preferred dividends will be in our numerator, right? So we're going to have $120,000. What are preferred dividends? Well, preferred dividends are zero. So we don't, we don't have to worry about that. But now here's where the increase comes in, right? So remember we said we had an increase 
Let me change colors here so we make this really clear. We're going to have an increase, and we can't just increase by 6,000, right? Because we just explained that there was a tax shield with the debt, right? So we have the $6,000 that we're adding back, but we need to multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate, which is 0.4, right? 40%. And that adjusts for that tax shield, right? Okay, now in the denominator, in our denominator, we're going to have the 30,000 shares outstanding. And I just I just pulled that number here, right? We just said there was 30,000 throughout the year. But then we assume that those 10,000 shares were converted. So we add the 10,000 in the denominator, okay? And now we just go and, and we just do basic just do basic math here. And so that's going to yield a diluted earnings per share of three dollars, three dollars and nine cents a share, which is lower than what our basic earnings per share would have been. So basically, what we're saying is here that if all these people that had this, all our debt holders, that hundred thousand in debt, if they all said, and we're assuming that they converted by, at the beginning of the year. So let's say our the beginning of our year was was January first. This is worth mentioning here. Let's say it was January 1st. We assume they all converted as of January 1st. Unless, of course, it, it would be different if we assume that, that we, we didn't even you know, issue this debt until like three-fourths of the way through the year. And I'll make another video on that. But we're just assuming here we issued the debt at the beginning of the year. And so now we're saying that if all those people had converted into 10,000 shares of equity at the beginning of the year, that would reduce our earnings per share, it would dilute it, and the new earnings per share would be $3.09.